Hey everyone. So today we are going to look at a really important concept called quantile regression. And I think the best way to actually look at this is through an application of like how, for example, Instacart would use this. So in general, a very, very, you know, quintessential example for Instacart in, in machine learning is like, okay, you're given like a distance from a grocery store to a buyer's location. How long will it take for, um, you know, a driver to go from the grocery store to the buyer location with all the groceries? So given distance, determine ETA, which is kind of like what the problem here, yeah. The problem here kind of symbolizes the same thing. Now, in general, if we were to just say, okay, let's say that for this buyer A, if it's like, I don't know, 10 miles, it'll take 45 minutes to go to the, or let's say like, let's see, let's give it a better number, 30 minutes to go to a store. And that's what a model would project. And this you can do with some, some simple regression technique. But on the app, typically we see like, instead of 30 minutes, it doesn't say like your food will be here in 30 minutes or your groceries will be here in 30 minutes. It'll be like, okay, between 25 and 35 minutes converted to a time right? So there's always this lower and upper bound, or it'll say your groceries will be here within 35 minutes. So in order to compute these bounds, we use quantile regression, and that becomes super important here. So now that's like a basic intuition of where we would use quantile regression. So let's start getting some a little into the weeds with the math, not too much. And then we have like some code right under here. So let's start with that. So typically, like I said, um, any kind of regression problem, we kind of have this kind of loss of a, a squared error loss, where y is the actual time in this case, the actual label, and then x theta is the is something that's predicted by our model, which would be the ETA in this case. Now for quantile loss, it changes quite significantly. Well, actually not that much. I'll, I'll explain it. It's, it's a, it looks pretty complicated, but it's a pretty simple formulation. Now. If we want to, let's say, we want to penalize our loss if the percentile is low, but the prediction is high. And then we also want to penalize the loss if the percentile is high, but the prediction is low. So what we mean here is like, with quantile loss, we are predicting a percentile within which we are sure that um, the order would be satisfied. So let's say this is like the upper bound or the lower bound or some some bound in that case. Um, a good example would be, let's say for ETA case, right? Instacart, typically it would be, okay, 30 minutes would be the label that would be in a typical regression case, but I gave a 25 to 35 bound, right? Let's say 25 minutes is like, there might be a 10% chance that we want to say that there's like a 10% chance that would be the lower bound. And then there's a 90% chance that'll be within the upper bound. And then our model makes projections. So let's say our model says 25% chance, sorry, 10% uh, chance it'll be there within 25 minutes. But then there's a 90% chance that it'll be there within 35 minutes, which is why Instacart on the app would say your groceries would be here between 25 and 35 minutes. And each of these two, 25 and 35, are a part of like, they're the output of the regression model due to different quantiles. And that's what tau is here. So tau can be any number between 0% and 100% or zero to one, actually. Now here, it's this first line, let's just take a look at this first line here. So if y minus x theta is greater than equal to zero, that means our predictions, that means that the predicted value is actually low from our model. And this is good if we are predicting only like the lower percentiles, like if it was a 10th, if tau was like 10%, like the 10% quantile, because we expect it to be low, but we want to penalize it if tau is high. Like if it was a 90% quantile and we're seeing that the prediction is actually lower than the label and much lower than the label, we want to penalize that, right? And the exact opposite is true for the second line that we see here. So if y minus theta x is less than zero, that means that, well, the prediction is much higher than the label, which is only good for higher percentiles or higher quantiles. And it's we want to penalize it for much lower quantiles. And we're saying one, tau minus one instead of one minus tau because we want this product to be a positive number. And that's it, actually. That is all about the quantile loss. You understand the math. If you understood this, you understood the math. 
And we can actually just jump into the actual problem here and implementation. So right now, the big problem is, uh, like I said before, let's build a regression model that determines delivery time based on the distance from the buyer, right? So you have uh, certain libraries that were important here, uh, importing here, versus make regression, which will create our regression data set. Then we have pandas, which is our um, go-to library for data frame manipulation. Uh, Matplotlib for the pretty charts. Seaborn for the pretty charts. NumPy for the math. Um, test train split to split your test and train data. Now, LightGBM uh, is basically an implementation, Microsoft's implementation of graded boosted decision trees that is actually pretty good and very easy to use for quantile regression. And so I use it here. Now, um, this chunk of cell is basically for us to make the data set. I didn't get this data set from anywhere, just making it on my own and tweaking it. So we have 10,000 examples with one feature. That's the distance. Um, uh, and that feature is informative. And I'm just saying like a random state is 42, just to, to kind of just set the value there. And right here, uh, the data frame, yeah, I'm just converting it to data frames and what we're doing is I'm, I'm kind of adding some noise and then trying to shift the mean and standard deviation so that it becomes actual represent, actually representative of like a distance in terms of miles or like the time to buy or in terms of minutes. And if you kind of look at the distribution of like the, the feature and the label, they kind of do look pretty legitimate. They look like legitimate feature and a legitimate label right here. I'll split into train and test sets, which is like a 90-10 split. Uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's it. That's all about, you know, getting our data. So we have our data on hand and now we can play around with it. So let's first visualize some of the test data. So the test data is now like, it's a 10%. So that's about 1000 samples, right? So plotting distance versus time to buyer, you get this little pretty chart. You can kind of see, you can, um, it is a linear relationship between distance and time to buyer. So it actually shouldn't be too difficult to model this data. Um, let's see right now. Okay. So here's like the chunk of the actual training process, right? So I'm saying tau, uh, which is going to be our quantile ranges, uh, is going to be like 10%, 50% and 90%. And I have to iteratively keep training different LGBM models because for these tree based, uh, you know, tree based boost boosting regressor models, we can't just train one model to get all the quantiles, we have to train only one of these regressors each time for a specific quantile. Um, this isn't actually too, this isn't really a big deal because training time is also not that slow for these regressors. Um, I'll probably give you a tidbit later. Actually, if you wanted to try this out with a like neural network, for example, you can have the neural network just take the same input, but the output could be three neurons where you have like a 10% quantile, a 50% quantile, and a 90% quantile. And you can add any other quantile you want. And so the input would be three regress values. The output would be three regress values. And you just need to change the loss function to reflect um, this neural net quantile loss. And then you get like a, sorry, this, this quantile regression loss and you get a neural net quantile regressor. Pretty fun stuff. I didn't do it here, but that's just like a pretty cool idea that you could probably take care as a, as like a little personal project. So, okay, we fit the, we fit this, uh, re quantile regressor. I'm, I'm, I'm fitting it in as like, okay, I'm saying, Hey, I want to minimize the quantile loss. And I say that the the percentage or like the quantile here is 10% or one of these. And then we fit it. We make predictions on the test set. And then I'm just appending it to like, I'm just having this huge dictionary that I'm just like continuously appending it to. And then I'm constructing a data frame from all the, the actual predicted values and this time to buy or label. And so in the end, we end up with like this kind of data frame where we have a feature, we have the three predictions made by the models, and then we have the actual label, the actual time it took to get to the buyer. And typically this value will lie between, you know, the 10% and 90%. There are some chances like here where it could be slightly greater than 90% or even slightly less than 10%. But like, I think 
in most cases, like a buyer would be like, okay, your time to arrival is between 53 minutes and 70 minutes, which seems pretty legitimate here because it actually arrived in 54 minutes. So that's good. Next I'm doing like, I'm doing something called like melting this data frame. Basically you take all of this and you convert all these columns into just like a single row of values and then have their corresponding value in each cell reflected in this value column. I do this because in this next part, I wanted to plot uh, the data out. So here, uh, let me just go here. You see these blue ticks, right? These are the actual labels, right? And here you can see the same blue ticks are actually the same labels. But then we also have each, uh, for each of these thousand blue ticks, we have a thousand orange ones, a thousand green ones, and a thousand red ones, which signify the, the 10th percentile, 50th, per, 10th percentile, 50th percentile, and 90th percentile respectively. And so like when we're making a prediction for like, I don't know, like one of these, you and you want to get a lower and upper bound, we have it just by, you know, just by looking at the orange or the red ticks. And so we can get, uh, for this Instacart example, you know, you can get like lower and upper bounds, which is pretty cool. Now, in order to like, maybe like looking at this picture, you could see, oh yeah, it does kind of look like a lower and upper bound-ish. Um, you can kind of verify that just by looking at the nature of the test data itself. So for the 1000 examples, right, that we have, how many cases is the label greater than the 10 percentile uh, prediction by the model? And it indeed is 90% of them. So it's only 10% of them is actually less than the actual, than the, than the, um, this value predicted by the model. How many of them are greater than the 50th percentile? That's almost half, 50%. And how many of them are greater than the 90th percentile? Well, it's only, it's actually exactly only 10%. So clearly quantile regression is working in a way that you intuitively would think, right? And you can do this for almost any other application too. I have a couple of resources here for the Instacart and there's also a pretty cool quantile regression blog that's right over here that you can probably reference. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So I hope you understood everything in this video. I'm gonna probably put this code up on GitHub and uh, please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff, go the whole nine yards, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.